welcome back. Now, as I mentioned, it's DIY all or nothing. Let's find ways to maximize profit, minimize risk. If you're a DIY investor, welcome back to Pat Garrett from Six Park, Nathan Samasundram from Deep Data Analytics, Andy Rogers is here with me. We also have Al Bentley who's joining us from Simply Wall Street uh, remotely as well. So welcome back to everybody. Al, welcome. So. If you had to pick, would you be self-directed completely? Would you, you know, be automated or would you choose to do a bit of both? Well, I, I think they're kind of different things because um, it, the idea that it has to be binary, right? You have to choose one is kind of, um, it forgets what the customer wants. I, I honestly think most people forget that choosing your own investments, giving yourself that control, whether it's SMSF or being able to decide exactly how I construct my portfolio is, it's a choice, it's not a requirement. And so for some people, they do it. And when you understand, when you look at why they do it, you realize that it's a lot more complex than just uh, risk versus return. Most people do it because they love the control aspect, they love the building aspect, they love the learning aspect, and they love the challenge. So it's not meant to be for everyone. Um, and I think when we try to lump them all together, that's, that's where we go wrong. Does a lot of it come down to age or demographic? Uh, yeah, there is a high correlation for that. Um, and also the, the expectations. People tend to think some of these things are pretty easy to do. When they start to do it, they understand how much research you've got to do um, and how much involvement that you have to put in and hours that you have to put into the process. And that kind of changes the aspect of, oh, I thought I'd be a, a, a trader, but now I want to be a long-term investor. And so that kind of changes the dynamics of how you approach things. So I think people evolve, but the beauty of technology uh, and platforms like CMC offers is that you can change. So you're not stuck. Uh, as you said, you have the ability to change from one aspect to the other and depending on what you're comfortable with, and that'll take time because I don't think people really know how they want to manage their money. When they start off, they have an ideal perspective, but when they actually do it, they'll find out that what works for them might be slightly different. And you can evolve because you're not a fund manager. You're not stuck to a particular mandate. You can evolve with the process and with the tools that you have to get a better return. Pat Garrett, Six Park co-CEO, what do you think? Is hybrid the way to go? Uh, I do believe that um, there's a lot of benefits in that. We see that with a lot of the clients we have. So um, what we do effectively is help people put together a diversified portfolio using exchange traded funds and then manage that portfolio on behalf of the clients. Okay, just repeating a couple of themes that have been mentioned, um, I think it's important to recognize that um, DIY doesn't necessarily obviously mean trading every day. It just means you're doing it yourself and you have a measure of control over it. Uh, it can mean make, that you make an active decision to invest in a more passive way, or you make an active decision to handle, um, let somebody else handle part of your investment management um, and then maybe you do a bit yourself. Um, and it's also, I think, important to note, again, echoing a theme that uh, investing is quite hard. It's emotional. Uh, it takes time. Uh, it can be really stressful when markets aren't doing um, what they, you know, you want them to do. And um, it's kind of great at the start and it can um, become more challenging over time. And there's a lot of data that, you know, suggests that it's, it, 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 it's, it's a difficult long-term proposition. So um, what we see is a lot of clients who uh, want to be engaged in actively managing some investments on their own, but um, also want to have a portion where it is, um, you know, call it boring but beautiful. It's a diversified portfolio of exchange traded funds across different asset classes with sort of a managed level of growth versus defensive uh, to align with somebody's particular situation with rebalancing and other aspects, um, which is what a service like ours, we're not the only one, Six Park, that um, does this. Um, but what it does do is takes a bit of the heavy lifting um, and stress and time commitment. And that way, what we've seen is a lot of clients who might wanna dabble in crypto, they might wanna um, uh, invest in some of the more speculative overseas shares. But if there's um, a lot of volatility in the market, they sleep a, li a little bit better because uh, they've taken that hybrid approach of um, of the more active trading uh, type of activity with a more passive asset allocation based approach. 
out. We missed you a little bit earlier on in the piece. What does your data show you in terms of the type of information, the type of, of data that self-directed investors or DIY investors are really seeking out? Um, well, I mean, I think what's important, it, it, it's been mentioned before, but like people are all going on their own journey and you're constantly evolving as an investor. So there's not like one set of data that they must, they must know, um, as they, as they change and, and learn new things, they'll look for new bits, new, new pieces of data. And I, that's the beauty of uh, you of being a DIY investor. You have that full control and that's, that's the best part. So, um, but I, I think that there's, there's, there's sort of a, a base amount of knowledge um, that you, everyone needs to get to. And I, I think there's a confusion that sometimes that investing is complex. And actually, I don't, we, we at Simply Wall Street don't believe investing is, is complex. It's made to appear complex, complex because it suits the industry to make it look like that. Therefore, we have fund managers. Therefore, we have services that do it for you, right? But 70%, I would say, of investing is not investing. It's understanding how companies work, right? You, you understand how a company works, how a business works. That's the kind of the first part. And that's what fascinates most people. That's why they love it. And they, they can have a better understanding or be contrarian. That's what investing is all about, really, is, is not following the crowd. Um, and, and they can develop that over time. So um, I would say there's a the big majority of information to answer your question that people need is more about the actual companies and what the companies are doing and how they're running, because that's at the core of making great decisions. And investing is all about making great decisions. That sounds so old school, but refreshing at the same time, Andy. Uh, fully automated, in person, or a bit of both? I think it's probably a hybrid model. Um, uh, you know, I keep saying a platform like ours. This is my, my favorite line today. But um, we do see a lot, a lot of customers have multiple accounts, so they can have one where it's literally, you know, they're having a, a you know, a barbecue type portfolio from what they've discussed with their friends. Another one, they'll be following a kind of tip sheet, whether it's a, a Morningstar model portfolio or a, a Motley Fool or, or something like that. And then they may have something um, where they're mirroring the um, industry super fund. Mm. Um, so I think hybrid is, is, is popular um, unless people are super confident and they'll go very much one way. Um, but one comment I'd like to say is, is really investing is, is a, is a, a long-term educational journey. Nobody knows everything and things are changing all the time. So um, it's really that attitude to learn and, and improve um, how good you are at investing. And data. Yeah, look, I think data is also, it's, it's one of those things that's evolved. Um, I think it's probably be the biggest commodity in the next decade or two to come because everyone has a lot of data. A lot of people just don't know how to use it. Yep. And what we're seeing is, is there's a lot of explosion of the data. And, and it's right. And, you know, what Andy was saying in the context of looking at a particular company. And I think, you know, every company, every sector has a s decent amount of quality data sets that you can follow that will tell you where in the cycle they're in. And, yes, it, it will require you to go through that process. And I always tell investors, you know, in, in the early in the cycle, ETFs is a really nice way to get exposure to a particular sector or a market, part of the market that you like, yep. without the stock specific risk. So it's a nice way to get the exposure, do it for six months, you understand whether you're good at that sector, not good at that sector, and then you can go down to the stocks. Mm -hmm. Jumping straight into the stocks without an analytical support, you're flying blind. No matter how good you are, you know, for the first 12 months, you're going to make mistakes. Let me tell you, everything I've made I, it's because in the first couple of years, I lost a lot. I mean, I bet against Google, right? I oh, bought, good move, looks, I bought, there were four, you know, um, basically some search engines and I picked LookSmart. <laughs> and my, uh, you know, inside information was Google was going to get taken out by LookSmart. That didn't quite I work out. I gotta stop you before you just <laughs> <laughs> ruin but, all your credibility. But, but, it's, but it's one of those things, when you, uh, that early in the cycle, you just don't know how things are going to play out. Yeah. And, but if you like a thematic, ETF is a great way to get exposure to that thematic without knowing who the winner is going to be. Okay, listen, um, we are running short on time, so we're gonna take a very short break. On the other side of the, uh, the break, we will answer your questions that are still coming in and we can still take them. That's the beauty of these live events. We're back in just a tick, stay with us.